Hello everyone and welcome. On this episode we are going to take a look on how we can save and load the game. This episode is going to be a little bit bigger than usual, so I hope you guys enjoy it and let's jump right into it. Well, before we get started with the coding and all, we need to do a few things. One of those things is to create a new game object here inside the controllers and we call it Game Manager. Let's just go ahead and stick it in the top. That's one of the things. Another thing is we need to go in here into Edit, Project Settings and Player and we need to change the company name and the product name because this will be important for when we want to save. So let's show and change the company name to something like, I don't know, Stereo PT, which is my username. Now, with that done, let's just add a simple game manager script to our game manager object and let's jump into the script and start coding. Well, we need some methods. One of those methods being a public void save game and another one is a public void load game. Also, we need to get the location for where the saves are being stored. And for that, I'm going to create a public string and I'm going to call this save file text. Also, let's get it to default to something like fut future shop. And we can give it a random extension. Let's just go ahead and go save game SG. Or we can even go FS because it's future shop FS. Okay, now in the start method, we need to create a string that's responsible for storing the full path to that file. And we can go here, create a new public string. Well, let's keep it private, private string and let's call it a save, look, save path and now save path is going to be equals to path and for that we might need using system.io we go path.combine and we are going to combine application persistent data path and we can combine that with the save file text and this will give us the path to our save file with that done let's go ahead and create some buttons so we can test the save and load functionality so start the time lapse Okay, on the new game button, all we want to do is whenever we click it, we want to reload the active scene. So let's go ahead and, and state using system dot uh, not system sorry Unity add engine dot scene management, and here on the new game method we are going to do scene manager dot load scene and what index of the scene we want is scene manager dot get active scene dot build index 
and if we go to build settings and add the open scenes and we run the game whenever we click the new game button this will refresh the scene so if we have for instance an item in inventory right here if we click new game we will get back to the jobs and no items so just a simple restart of the game well for the save game it's a little bit more complicated than that so the first thing we want to do is we want to be using system.runtime.serialization.formatters.binary and we want that because we want to serialize our inventory into a binary format so no one can really change values in there to kind of sheet in items for the game and with that we go here into our save game method and we go binary formatter and we can call it bf is going to be equals to a new binary formatter after that we want to create a file stream so file stream and we can call this fs is going to be equals to a new file.create and where we want to create this in our save path great and because here we open a new file stream we want to close it this is the first thing you need to do right after you create a new file stream is to close it because we don't want that to stay open and inside there what we want to do is go binary format dot serialize and where to we want to serialize this we want to serialize this to our new file stream and what we want to serialize is inventory controller dot instance dot inventory if we do this go back to unity and run the game let's just get some items so i can so we can test this so just get some items right here we have these three items if we hit save game we should get no error and if we jump here into the app data folder in your computer go to local low find the folder with the name that you had for your company default company mine was uh, stereo pity you can see that inside here we have a folder with the name of our uh, game and inside there there's a new file with the file name that we specified and if you look inside you can see a bunch of binary and this is great because now we can get this and deserialize it to data again well the load game is a little bit more complicated so let's jump right into it and start with the function well the first thing we have to check is if the file exists because we will only want to load if we have saved already so if the save path file exists what we want to do we want to create a new binary formatter that's equal to a new binary formatter and we want to open a file stream so file stream fs is equals to a new no sorry not new we can go file.open and what file we want to open we want to open the save path and there's a need for a file mode that's file mode dot open and as always whenever we create or open a new file stream we want to close it right away so file stream dot close and inside here we can deserialize the data and we need to pass that data somewhere and because we are only saving the inventory let's pass it to the inventory controller so inventory controller dot instance dot load inventory and this is a function that we will be creating later and what we want to pass here is a cast to a list of item stacks and to deserialize it we go bf for binary formatter dot deserialize and just pass the file stream just that easy well let's go ahead and create this function here in the inventory controller let's go public void load inventory 
and we can pass a list of item stacks and let's call this loaded list and the first thing we want to do when when we load the inventory is we want to clear the previous inventory if there's any so let's go clear inventory and let's create this function right here so private void clear inventory and in order for us to clear the inventory we can go for int i equals zero i is less than scroll list dot uh, child count i plus plus and then we can go game object dot destroy and what we want to destroy we want to destroy the scroll list dot get child at index i dot game object so this will destroy all game objects that are current in currently in the inventory whenever we load so the first thing we we do is destroy them all and then we load the new ones the ones that are in the save and to do that we can go for each so for each item stack stack in loaded list we already have a function to add them to the inventory so let's go add item to inventory and we pass the stack however this will make so that the inventory this variable here is still with data in it so let's go ahead and here let's go inventory dot clear and this will make sure that all the data in this inventory variable gets deleted and with this if we go back to unity and we run the game and we get some items you can see that we have two sensors and uh, one sensor and two electronics let's save the game let's create a new game you can see that now we have nothing in the inventory and let's load the game and boom there we go one sensor and two electronics and let's get some more items so two sensors three electronics and one aluminum let's save the game and load the game and it's the same so let's create a new game and load it and there we go saving and loading very easy and with that we reach the end of the episode and now we have saving and loading done in the next episode i will be creating and changing this layout because this doesn't look very futuristic or even futuristic at all so the next episode might just be a big time lapse of me changing all the graphics for this game uh, so i hope you guys enjoyed if you do please leave a like comment on the video if you have any doubts about what was happening in this episode subscribe to the channel and i will see you on the next one